9442 is a commercial burglary at a building site in Penalta at £2,500 worth. It's 8.30 in the morning and Inspector Lawton is conducting the daily briefing session at Gwent Police Headquarters. I think there's CCTV um, and it looks like they'll have had to put it on some kind of truck. For the business crime team, it's vital intel on what crimes have occurred across the force overnight. I ask you then to link in with Hannah around that and then the MPTs, bro. In the morning I would come in and look at what sort of thefts we have across the force. Silver minibus is stolen from the school. When we go through our crime recordings, whether that's a theft or a burglary, and we'll delve into that um, crime occurrence and we'll look for an item which is stolen. It's also a chance to identify emerging crime trends and patterns across the area. So quite a lot in the West um, overnight. We've had a theft of a vehicle from, um, well, we've had three theft of vehicles from Ebba Vale. One of the top areas of concern for the team is metal theft. With the trading prices of metals on the rise, scammers, gangs and dodgy dealers are stealing whatever scrap metal they can get their hands on. So what we've got here is four core cabling, which would be used to power a large building. So this is main power cable. Um, it's cut into three meter strips. Um, it's quite heavy. And if you can see, um, you've got the four core in there. The value is the, the actual copper cabling, which you can see within the, the, the plastic colorings. We received a phone call that somebody was stripping a large amount of copper cabling in their back garden. Um, I've attended that location and I've located around 70 meters of the cabling which we've seized and we've brought back to the station metal crime has become big business costing the uk 220 million pounds per year so in gwent the police have introduced a scheme called we don't buy crime where they work alongside trading standards and scrap merchants to help track down criminals morning martin morning martin do your trading standards when we visit, we all split up. Uh, one of us will go with trading standards into the office. What if we could look at your books for yesterday, please? No problem. This is yesterday's book. Here we go. We'll look at the records so we know what we're looking for with to regards to what's recorded in relation to the materials and the vehicles. CK70, is that one of yours? Unless it's in you. The team know they only have a small window to track down stolen metal because it passes so quickly through scrapyards. When they buy items from the for the public or their, their customers, they don't want it on site, they want to sell it at the price they pay for it because they can lose money real quick. So the speed the, the metal is moved, sometimes it's 24, 36 hours before it's taken off site. It could have been anyone coming in for a cup of tea, it could have been a visitor, okay. someone asking for a price. We're looking to reduce the network where stolen goods uh, move through. So that can involve a sense, something as simple as letting them know that an item has been stolen. The pickup comes in, but he just comes in for a cup of tea every morning, he comes in, see? During a routine visit like this, the officers also inspect the yard itself. Yeah, they probably come from a factory unit. Just looking for any sort of equipment when we walk around, which is out of the ordinary. And then we'll just have a chat to the owners to see where they've come from and see where who's actually brought those items in. Then you've got different types of cabling. Um, this could just be from household wiring. So what they'll do is, you see the copper inside, they'll strip all the plastic off. And then what they'll do then is they'll separate the copper. And then you've got copper in here, will probably be a bit more expensive than copper in there because of the quality. Um, and then what we do, uh, we, we got our torches. Sometimes you get big companies will put smart water or any identification sort of markings on it so we can identify where it's come from. Smart water is a permanent forensic marker with a unique DNA code. Copper prices are at an all time high of nearly £6,000 per tonne, making it very attractive to thieves. Network Rail alone estimate cable theft costs them up to £16 million a year. So that would be good stuff in the sense of the quality of the copper in there. Probably used to um, power a main cable. Yeah, yeah, so we're just looking for the, the amount here, really. 
Um, and what we do if there's a, just a, a large amount, we'll just check it with our torches. And if there was any indication there was any smart water on it, we just speak to the owner to see if we're, that we're who's brought that in, and we take it from there then. The scheme aims to reduce the opportunities thieves have to profit from their crimes, helping to better protect local business. The real impact isn't necessarily the theft, it's everything around the theft. There are victims of commercial burglaries where they're stealing items for 30, 40 pounds. The damage they're causing to get in is in the thousands. The business has to stop operating. They have to arrange the repairs, which takes another member of staff away from doing their job. How many people are looking to lose their jobs because the loss is so much that the company can't afford to pay for all these staff and the loss. So the, the, there is a human cost to theft, definitely. We got a good working relationship with our second-hand retailers and the scrap merchants, so they, they feel confidence in us to go in and speak to them and look at their books in a professional manner, really. We want our scrap dealers to be run properly, and we want to be able to work in partnership so we can reduce the, the crime and within our force area. By working together with local businesses and other law enforcement agencies, it's hoped that scenes like these will become a thing of the past.